public libraries get a bad rap for being outdated institutions in a modern world. What people don't realize is that public libraries are champions for equity, diversity, and access. They are beacons of hope, sharers of knowledge, and builders of community. Come along as we show you what a public library is really like. What are you waiting for? Come check us out at Red Deer Public Library. This is our story. Be a part of the story. Now that you know more about how libraries operate, how they are staffed, and the challenges they face, you might be wondering what the future holds for public libraries. How will libraries continue to evolve to meet the needs of their community and the worlds in which they exist? Will libraries continue to be relevant, even with endless free information at our fingertips? What's next for Red Deer Public Library? My name is Shelley Odishaw. I am the board chair of the Red Deer Public Library Board. I think that public libraries are still important because they are a not only a unifying factor, they are an equalizing factor. Anybody can come to the library, regardless if you um, can afford to buy books on Amazon or not, because not everybody can, um, not everybody chooses to. If I'm going to buy a book, it's because I've read it and I really liked it. Um, but I think that being able to come and have a free library card and know that you can read any book that you can find in our facilities and some that you don't find in our facilities because you know the the interprovincial library alone is like the best thing. Um, I think that it's important because it provides access to people for you know computers and different pieces that they may not have in their homes or not their homes. Um, it is also important because it is, again, that you know, unifying factor where people can come and have conversations and you know, continue to learn, be that, it's that lifelong learning opportunity place where you can you know, learn about rocks, you can learn about computers, you can learn about Greece, it doesn't matter. Um, it's about the only place that you can do that. So on the horizon for the library, the next five to 10 years, I hope to see us continue our expansion, um, whether that is pop-ups or entire new branches. It doesn't really matter to me as long as we continue to provide that access for, for families to come to the library regardless of the branch, uh, to find their books, to find their programs, to find the different pieces that they're looking for. The downtown branch is for the most part um, and say hypothetically a new building we've, we've done a lot of upgrades we've put a lot of money into the structure but at some point we will have to have the conversation of do we continue to do that or do we look at a new facility someplace else whether it is a, an existing structure that we move into and renovate or an entirely new building if, at which point that fund development person <laughs> will be very key in how that works, as well as the relationship that the CEO has with the city as far as um, capital planning and all of that, because we won't be able to do something like that without their partnership and help. So having that good relationship with not only the, the council liaison that sits on the board, but the entirety of council, the administration, and all of the staff over at the city. Um, and it's important for the board to understand that relationship and how it works. You know, it would be lovely if we could just decide to, we're going to go build a new building, somebody start fundraising. It doesn't work like that. I don't know where we go. <laughs> uh, for me, I see an opportunity uh, the staff and the CAO and the board have really have done a great job in terms of utilizing the space at the downtown branch. Um, the maintenance and the investment in terms of uh, making it look good. But sooner or later, I believe that the City of Red Deer uh, and the Red Deer Public Library will have to look for a new downtown branch. 
uh, if you haven't seen the Calgary Red Library, uh, wow. Uh, I don't think we'll ever meet that, but uh, there's a really potential for us when the time comes to fundraise, to vision uh, what a new Red Deer Public Library downtown branch can be. Although libraries, you know, we're hundreds of years old, it's an old idea, but we have new opportunities, new ways of doing things that are really exciting. And so I mentioned AI and everyone's talking about AI, but I think a really simple but pretty application of artificial intelligence could be the real time or close to real time analysis of reading behavior within the collection to make really quick adjustments to our purchasing. So right now, you know, we tend to go quite large spans of time, maybe a year or slightly smaller. And then we look at items and see, well, how, how heavily are these being used? Are they popular? Should we get the next, um, next kind of thing like that? Or should we change the focus of our collection spending? But I think with just improved software and with AI and with technology, we could probably speed up the process of reacting to what readers want to read and what they probably want to read next so that our collections are even fresher and um, more satisfactory to our patrons. I think that that's really promising in our immediate future. I think that's somewhere that we're going to see real growth. We do as much as we can now with the tools that we have, but it seems to me that we'll get even better at anticipating what people want to read next so that it's on the shelf when they look for it. And I think that will be kind of exciting. I wish that everyone knew and really understood the type of interactions that we have here, because I have met people here I would never have met otherwise, whether they be coworkers or whether they just be customers, I would never have met them otherwise. And those little interactions become part of who you become with all of those changes. You learn something from every person that comes in here, whether you learn to be more open, you learn to be more welcoming, you learn to be more protective of yourself. There's a, there's a lesson in every interaction that you have and I wish people would understand what the value of that is. I also wish people would understand how easy it is to support us. You just have to come in, just get a card, come to a program. It's easy, it's cheap, but that support means everything to us. So I wish more people would do that. I hope that the library grows, um, whether I'm here or not. I hope that we end up with a new branch. Um, this building is lovely and beautiful and holds a lot of memories, but it's time to probably be looking at something new. So I hope we get a new library. I think more than anything, I hope that we're brave. I hope that we do the things that make a few people mad and make a lot of people think. I hope that we step out of our library comfort zone. I hope we're leaders in the industry and not always just followers. Um, I hope that we are just able to take a foot step forward and try something new. COVID made sure that we knew that we could change things and failure was okay and we could do it quickly without overthinking it. And I hope that we're brave enough to do that. Yeah, uh, I really hope that as time goes on, uh, the library continues to grow and not just in terms of footprint or size or the number of pop-ups that we have, although I think that would be very good too, because having worked at Bauer, the Bauer Mall pop-up, I definitely recognize that there are some communities that we just aren't able to reach right at the moment. And I would like to see more of that happen for us. And as much as we'd like to be able to do all the things all the time, we're constrained by budget and also by human resources and many other things that go along with that. So I guess my biggest hope is if you happen to be watching this, support your public library and doing that means just getting a free membership card with us if you live in the city. Um, that helps us to show others who make the bigger decisions just how important we are in the community. Um, there, we service a lot of other people who aren't full library members who may never get a library card because they're unhoused. They don't have a permanent address. We do try to help those people as much as we can with other policies that we have. But trying to capture what we do in the community outside of just some numbers about how big our membership is, that can be hard sometimes. And I think we make a really big difference, not just for those who are unhoused, but also for children who use our programs. Uh, literacy is very important, especially at an early age, um, but always, of course. 
The adult literacy program that we uh, do is also wonderful and uh, is in need of volunteers, including our youth literacy program too. So the more people that we have to help, I feel like builds a stronger community for us all. Um, I think for the future, um, I want to see us continue to um, expand awareness of the public library and all that we offer. Um, and it's exciting to see like the growth of the Timberlands branch and now the Collicut Center to see just um, how well used that little space is. Um, just to see maybe not necessarily more branches, but um, just to see us expanding our reach in the community. So as things unfold in our community, I would hope that our libraries will continue to be that place of connection for people where they can, um, where they can go and feel like they can belong and they can be warm and they can be welcomed and they can charge their phone or they can do what they need to do to feel safe and um, to have people there that welcome them. I would hope that um, our, at all levels of government would continue to recognize the value of libraries and support them with proper uh, levels of funding and um, that we can be that beacon of uh, diversity and inclusion that I think is so important and so needed in our communities. Uh, well, I think it's been a, a tough few year, years for librarians in North America, but uh, I, I think uh, that we've been doing an excellent job uh, despite all that's been happening, and I, I hope we continue to provide our uh, much-needed uh, services to the community. We are still important, I believe, because to be at home alone I mean, you can get everything you need on the computer. You can get your groceries delivered. You can get books right to your device. Um, you can get movies. Like, you don't need to leave the house. It's a terrible existence that way. Come in and meet people. That's it. You get out of the house. Get some fresh air. Browse the parks. Wander into the library. Grab a coffee. Um, you know, sit down and chat with people. So many people come up to the desk. And they don't even have a question. They just want to chat about the hockey game or they want to chat about the weather and they want to chat about things. And, and, and it's so important for people to get out of the house and come. And where else can you go besides the mall? And they want your money. We don't want your money. We just want you. So come in and see what we have to offer you. The library is an extremely important place in every community. It is a hub where people come to meet. Like I said, a wealth of knowledge here that everybody has access to. Problem is, is that a lot of people are, don't think that libraries are relevant anymore. Um, I challenge anyone to come in and see how relevant we really are though, because everybody comes in here and uses us when they need it every once in a while. Uh, everyone needs to come and get a library card. I mean, we have 26,000 members in a city of 100,000. Why are cards so important? Cards are important because that's where we get our funding. So everybody who gets cards, if we get more people having cards, we can get more funding for better things to offer the public. So it's a win-win. Cards are free uh, for red to residents. So just come and get one, even if you never come back again. I'd be sad about that um, because once you're here, you'll see how amazing it is. But even if you don't come in and you don't plan to use it, get a card. That's a stat we need, and we can get more stuff for children, more stuff for teens, more stuff for seniors, um, you know, and grow and, and be relevant to our city. I think in the future for our library, I, I see a big new beautiful building, still downtown, of course, uh, where we're needed and where the core services have to be, but a big new building so we can um, host so many more programs. Um, we're doing, I love the mix and mingle we're doing. I'm so excited about that. It is the funnest thing I think we've maybe ever done. Um, but I'd love to see more programming towards teenagers and more programming towards not even just teenagers, but that eight to 12 year old kind of age range um, where we're just starting to leave moms and dads and be able to be left alone for a little bit of time at the library. I'd love to see programs for that. I'd love to see us go to the schools and read I know that we have a big impact at the schools that we have a library at with literacy and early literacy, 
but I think we could have a huge impact going out to other schools too. And I think they'd welcome us. Um, in many, many years, I hope we still have all these old physical books here too, and that people are still checking them out and we're not just digital everything. Uh, I'd really love to keep physical books as long as forever <laughs> and ever. And I think we just keep growing and keep building the community and being here for the community. And I think just getting people back in here is important and um, getting back to like, maybe we could have a maker's market with artisans and artists and, and have them here in the library. And that would be so fun to have, I'd probably welcome a new community into the area and get them into the library and see what we have to offer. Cause they're coming to get their favorite goods from their favorite local artisan or, I'd love the cafe to be open on weekends. <laughs> Everyone's always disappointed that we're not. Um, so I think to have a bigger space with another little cafe would be ideal. I think that's a really big draw to some people. And yeah. Something that surprised me about the library is that it's not just books. Like um, RDP's library is not just books either, but I would primarily use it for the computer resources and books. But here we have like access to music and um, like streaming and digital collections and all that stuff. So with the cost of living getting higher and higher and higher and you know, some of the big corporations like Disney and Netflix are increasing their prices and making it hard to share, why not get a free membership and access some of those things for free? I know we do. If you're not a library user, you should be for the reasons I've already stated, but also if you have children, the children's section, um, it has like a cool kitchen area and there's like little shopping carts. All the books are at their level. You can reach them all. I didn't realize until I had children how valuable that service is. And it's awesome when I bring my son here and he's running around and he's looking at books. And it's awesome when I'm upstairs in my office and I look down and I see a little one just learning to walk, pushing the shopping cart. So come in, see what we have. We're awesome here. So I'm often asked about the future of the library. What do I think will happen in the future? What do I hope for the future? And, you know, my job is very much worrying about the future and preparing for the worst case scenario, whether it's another pandemic or uh, insurance or human resources or, you know, all those things. So often it's a real act of will to put aside the worry and to look at the amazing people who walk in the door and sometimes they're walking in the door for the first time since their children were little and they they've been just too busy but now they have a minute and they've come in the door and they remember hey i used to love that author i used to love to read i used to like to take magazines home or in our case we still do a really good trade with dvds so you know kind of miss blockbusters and look here's this huge collection so one of the things that gives me hope for the future are people coming back to the library who've been away for a while and, and just rediscovering the love, the love for the institution, the public institution, which defends so much that is good about our civilization and our world. They're coming in and just seeing a wide range of their neighbors and friends and people they haven't met yet, but they already have something in common. They're in the library. So I love that. And I love when we come up with a new program and it's wildly successful. And we bring in people again who haven't been in the library ever or for a long time. And it just reawakens that sense of community. So my hope for the future is just that more people will remember the public library, will acknowledge or, or at least feel the importance of being participating in society in this joint enterprise that's surrounded with a passion for information, for stories, for history, for making the world a better place by imagining other lives, other possibilities. And so my hope for the future is that we'll have more people coming back to the library, bringing their grandkids, bringing their friends, introducing their neighbors to this institution. Because while North America kind of takes public libraries for granted, we love them whether we use them or not. We believe in them whether we go through the doors or not. But many other countries don't. So for many newcomers, even from European countries that are find themselves in Red Deer, they just had no idea that there was this place where anyone could come in, 
and say that they needed help with something, filling out a form, finding a piece of information, and people would just help them and, and welcome them back and offer them more things and offer community connections. So I think that is, you know, something for everyone to remember that while you might take public libraries for granted, people in your circle or in your life might not know what, what the possibilities are. So my hope for the future is that more people come back, more people embrace one of these last institutions, which are community building for everybody, every age, every income, everybody. And, you know, I just, I just hope that in future, and I think in future, we've had such good response to our call out for volunteers, especially for our adult literacy program. I hope I'm seeing the beginning of people who have the time and ability to give back to their community. And I see the library as being a really good starting place. And it might not be where you end up volunteering. We might refer out to another place or another agency or another program or service, but we wanna be your starting point. We wanna get you started giving back to the community or enjoying your community, especially if you have time. So, you know, my hope for the future as the demographic shift happens and there's lots of people who are coming into retirement and, and healthy retirement, I really hope I see those people come through our doors and contribute back to the library. We're really looking forward to that. One of the th things that I learned and recognized um, during COVID, both personally and community-wise, is the impact of isolation. And through Google, you can ask Dr. Google, you can uh, go online, but if you don't have social people connection, uh, we're missing out on something. So I believe that yes, you can read a book online, but there's still some of us who grew up with a, ba a book. We like to turn the page. We like to uh, give a book away. We like to share a book. Uh, there's going to be a, uh, always for me uh, a place for hardcover books. I hope that continues. I also think about the opportunities about programs and spaces. Um, I think about uh, women and parents, single parents and fathers who have their children and perhaps they're at home. Bring your children to the library, that interaction piece. I think about aging population and again the isolation of staying in our own homes, being fearful of going out. Don't be. Uh, once you fall into that cycle, the mental health cycle, they say it becomes you know, worse and worse for individuals. Do the outreach, come to the library, have a coffee, bring a friend. And, and again, for me, lifelong learning is significant. Libraries and institutions play that important part for lifelong learning. Uh, having an educated and skilled workforce is important. Uh, learning different cultures, uh, interacting, uh, that's all a library can provide and uh, appreciation and shout out to our Red Deer Public Library and all their branches across the city. So looking into the future, um, I personally plan on working here for a really long time if all goes according to plan and I really look forward to all of the changes that are yet to come. The thing about the library is that you never really know what that change might be. So. What are we going to be doing in five years? I don't really know, but I am here for the ride. And I know that whatever we do end up doing is going to be exactly what our community needs. Um, and I really look forward to seeing what the future holds. I'm going to use that in the last episode. I already <laughs> know that. Okay. Are we good? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, Blah, blah, blah. Wow, you blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's good. All right. Well, you can find some <laughs> donuts in the workroom. There's fruit Great. and uh, help, you, help yourself to a drink. Okay. And then, yeah, we'll see you on Tuesday. Yeah, thanks hopefully, for coming hopefully in. Hopefully, this didn't uh, get messed up when it got tangled. I don't think so. It's because I chopped with my hands, probably. Yeah, right? You, you up, Karen? All right. Good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Thank you.